Just how good is Zen? That's the question everybody's asking right now. Seems like he's pretty good, if you ask me. But good enough to beat Moxie? We're about to find out. You know, if he can beat Moxie, then I guess the only ones go to an EU. Well, one of the, the only ones player in EU that's been dominant over the past year that he's not beaten would be Jarius, who just took down uh, Vatira. So he's shocking off the list pretty quickly and already up by one. Uh, can I ban? So uh, Sorry, I, I, I'm not going to be banning anybody personally right now. I'm looking at the game, but um, yeah, if there's a mod in chat, I'm sure they can. I mean, if somebody's insult insulting uh, someone, then I would just personally ignore them. Easiest way to deal with uh, insults in my experience. And I do have a lot of experience in that regard, trust me. But it's just like any other, anything else in life, you know, you, you get better at it when you practice. Ooh, good save by Moxie. Gotta look out for the bump though. Zen attempting it on the half flip there. Bit of extra spice in the end of that ceiling shot from Zen. Oh, well flicked though from Moxie. Now, this is something that is kind of new for Zen, I suppose. So far in my streams, played Razier's Lost and Jack. Now, none of those guys can flick the ball like Moxie can. Moxie's on a, a kind of a, in a league of his own. Um, there's a couple of players up there with him in flick quality, namely players like Toxic, players like Lion Blaze. But I do believe Moxie's the best flicker in the game. And I expect to see, well, I was, I was about to say rush challenges, but Zen's beaten me to it. I expect to see rush challenges from Zen to try and keep Moxie's flick at bay. Now, uh, he'll supplement those with the occasional fake challenge, the occasional full shadow play. But the, the way that you beat flicks is by rushing challenges. You, you need to stop the, the flicker from getting into this position. And thank you, Zen, for just perfectly illustrating everything I say as if it's a tutorial. This is the position you don't want to be in when you're defending against somebody with a world-class flick. It almost to, as if to... Um, not just accept Moxie's 1v1 challenge, but also accept the challenge of best flicker in the world. Zen puts a flick top corner. <laughs> Moxie's still in the boost from under his nose there. Keeps the ball alive. The mind game is ineffective. Zen stays goal side. Boost seal. On point for Moxie. Zen answering very well here. I mean, to defend 12 boosts against 100 like this is very confident from Zen. He's even going to read Moxie and put a shot on target from here. This whole time he's been at a boosted to disadvantage and he's the first player to get the shots off. Brilliant play. Moxie off the bar. He's going to have an open net though, surely. He puts it in with a triple off this crossbar from close range. Great placement from Moxie here. He's such a well-rounded player these days. Not just a grounded flick main. He has the aerial game to match it. Probably not the aerial game at the level of Zen. Definitely capable. Zen. The big bump after Moxie accelerated past him with the wave dash recovery. So what are the risks of uh, trying to race for the ball, race for the boost? You do leave yourself in a dangerous position. Yeah, there's a. We, we've got a couple of mods here. I think that they're just busy at the moment, so give them a second. Uh, I'm seeing messages are being timed out. So, probably just need to give it some time. So that the mods can keep up with all of you. Opportunity for Moxie to lead, but the shot could not be more straight down the middle if he tried. Gets a touch on the exit, but no boost on the exit. It was there for Zen after his spawn. A very instructive, safe approach down the line from Zen there. testing the water at the moment, seeing what kind of defense Moxie's going to play with. If he just puts the ball in dangerous positions, that's a spectacular turn by Zen. He was uh, really quite an exquisite mover in these awkward exchanges, these close quarters. He always seems to find the quickest way to move. Oh, that's just so clean. Zen is just something else, man. The, the way that he's able to get the ball moving from absolutely nothing it is definitely second to none um, in these past few days that I've watched him play. I really don't think anyone has 
manipulating the, the pace of the game like he is. Moxie's going to have his work cut out for him here. Threat of the demo backs him up, but Moxie stands his ground. You got to look out. You know, that was probably a goal scoring opportunity for Zen, even though it looked like a defensive position. You're never safe when this guy's rebounding the ball off his own back wall. Efficient takeoff for Zen. Oh my word, what a pre flip! How <laughs> does that ball left his car so quickly? Again, as if to illustrate what I'm saying, Zen produces ridiculous acceleration. That does not seem possible in the world Rocket League's built in. I mean, he is just too consistent with this. Far, far too, he's too, far too consistent with this for it to be real. What lab was this guy made in? And are there more Zens on the way? Oh, finally he made a mistake. So the messed up wave dash gives Moxie the possession. I guess he is human after all. But if that's the mistake you're going to make, I guess he can't complain because he's more than fine in the position after all is said and done. And he catches Moxie with the wall demo. Pre-flip center ball, pre-flip shot goes wide. You're never safe when you play against Zen. He's just mixing up his challenge game, mixing up his offense, and that's in. The ball bounces across the line, despite Moxie's best efforts to keep it out. I feel like I've seen that in Smug. If you want an example of this, go back and watch Stumpy versus Kaylee in, in uh, Salt Mine Underground. That exact thing happened. It was honestly quite hilarious. Stumpy saw the ball bounce off his back wall like that, thought that he was fine to go and get the boost, and then the spin took it in after the bounce. <laughs> it's uh, proof, I guess, for anyone wondering if um, there is, in fact, spin in Rocket League. Uh, the answer is yes, there is. The spin on the ball does change the way that it bounces off surfaces. However, since there's no aerial friction, there's no friction in the air in Rocket League, uh, spin does not affect the way the ball travels through the air. It only affects the way that it bounces uh, off walls. So you can sometimes use to that, that to your advantage. Although the effect is minimal, so it doesn't usually um, play a part in corner reads and wall reads. There isn't spin. Well, I think we just saw an example of spin, actually, to counter your argument. <laughs> Pretty sure we just saw it. <laughs> Snozbreeze, thanks to the 70 month tier one. Welcome back to the channel. Also, hey V lad, thanks to the Prime sub as well. Zen's immaculate game one win streak continues. He's won first game in every match he's played on my channel in the past two days. He's also won the second game in all the matches he's played across the last two days. Is Moxie streaming this, by the way? I meant to ask earlier. I've totally forgotten to, uh, to check. Is Moxie still streaming? Because he was streaming earlier. Um, he is. Okay, yeah, so you guys, if you want to hear Moxie's commentary, live commentary in this, in French, uh, he is streaming on his own channel. Well, he's actually going to use a little bit of quick chat here. The all chat, I got it from Moxie. Well, if you know, if nothing else works against Zed, you know, Razier's lost, Abjack, they've tried a plethora of strategies against Zen in the past couple of days. Nothing seems to work. Moxie is going to utilize mental warfare. Something that we didn't really see in any of the other games that he's played in. Let's see how it works out for him. This is something that Moxie has done quite a lot recently. He's, uh, I think, got low-key beef with several pros because of this. But I'm all for it. I'm loving the I'm loving the Moxie quick chat. I think it's uh, interesting to see how it plays out. I'm sure if you're a fan of Zen, you're not going to enjoy that. But as a neutral, I think it's uh, very interesting. <laughs> Bunko is booing. Thanks to the tier one, by the way. I don't think I said thank you to you yet. I'm think I believe I'm up to date with all the subs. But if I miss you, um, apologies. And Moxie should slow roll him here. He is going to slow roll him as well. This is mental warfare from Moxie in multiple ways. Zen in his toughest game two so far on stream. Oh, quick turnaround from Moxie. He's got an open net here. 
And it's not the fastest shot, but it's fast enough. Comfortably. Zen out of position. Out of luck as Moxie puts in a fourth. I don't see it as... I mean... What do you what do you guys really think? Because there's different ways of looking at it. Quick chat in pro play. Like, uh, so I've heard some people say that it's uh, gamesmanship, that it's not sportsmanlike to, you know, quick chat during a play um, or between plays, you know, kind of drawing parallels with games like tennis where you, you're not allowed to yell or make any uh, noise that would distract your opponent when they're about to hit the ball. Um, you know, quick chat could fall into that category where you're not allowed to type something that could be distracting while your opponent's trying to make a play. Um, I, don't, I don't really believe that uh, comparison is accurate, but it's, it's something I've seen. Um, other people think it's fine. Other people say that you should be able to use any advantage. It's in the game. Why not use it? Um, if it's there, it's supposed to be used is another, uh, is another argument. So yeah, th there's, there's different ways of looking at it. Personally, I think it's fine. Um, I don't think it's particularly impactful. Even if it was, I don't see the problem. Oh my, well Zen had a lot of time with that open net and he missed it by a mile. He's still in a great position. That was not what we come to expect from him. And his immaculate form that he's had on display. Maybe the effects of Moxie's mental games are already playing tricks to them. Zen trying to get into gear. He's trying to get moving. Moxie surprises him with a ceiling challenge. Moxie's one of those players that we have seen playing incredibly quickly on stream recently. Pogo's shot from Zen goes high. Very high, actually. Got past Moxie, but not on target. No danger there. Another successful rush challenge from Zen. It's all about the approach on these challenges. The bounce did not favor him. Moxie's on the breakaway again, and he's up 6-1. It's been all Moxie in game two. He has taken over, and he's managed to do so earlier in a series than anyone else who's played Zen so far. Zed Gibbs 125, thanks for the eight-month prime. Welcome back to the channel. I feel like I have to say it every time, because there's always like some Freestyler in chat telling me it's a plan B. Listen, I think a plan B is a dumb name for something that clearly looked like plan A. <laughs> it looked like he went for that and it wasn't a, a backup plan. So plan B is a dumb name in that instance. And uh, yeah, that's why I call it a pogo shot. It's much more intuitive, better description. And I don't think anyone who does call it a plan B will be confused about what's happening. Yeah, if you want a, a good example of what, you know, probably makes sense to be called a plan B, look at Zen vs. Lost. I'm, uh, I, I streamed it yesterday. It's probably getting uploaded to my channel in, uh, well, not not today, probably tomorrow. Um, yeah, Lost clearly in that game went for a flip reset. Didn't work and he landed um, underneath the ball and the, the, the shot just went into the net. So that, you know, probably looked like it was just a whoopsie. I guess I'll just land underneath the ball and see what happens kind of situation. Good movement by Zen. Moxie's equal to him, though, and he's recovered well. Quality of shot is good enough. Zen is slicing the goals, the goal lead, bit by bit. Still a long time to go, and with Zen's quality output that he's able to have when he's attacking, you know that he's going to get at least three chances, probably a lot more than three chances. And here's the first of them. The dunk creates it, and the shot finishes it off. 7-5. Zen's kickoff is capable. His offense is more than capable. And with over a minute to go, he's definitely got the time. Yeah, I've said it before. I can already see you all saying in chat, Willow, that's because in freestyling it often is plan B. I know, but we're not freestyling right now. This is 1v1. This is, com this is competition. This is Zen, ladies and gentlemen. He's not freestyling as somebody ranked 300. Silver 1. He's playing against one of the best players in the world right now, and he's clipping on him. The freestyler said it couldn't be done. Zen disagrees. The comeback is well and truly on, 
And Moxie might have misplayed. Ends up quickly. Moxie meets him. How's the bounce going to be? It's good for Moxie. The open net is a safe one. Well, Zen, he chanced it there. It was half a chance, certainly, but was it a necessary risk? Probably not. Another big kickoff win to the inside for Zen. This bounce is much better for him. Well, Moxie, who usually looks pretty resilient with his kickoffs, has defaulted to standard, and it's not working. I expect to see a wave dash recovery here because he's lost a direct kickoff goal there. Indeed, we do get the wave dash recovery. A lot more solid of a strategy. Harder to score on a wave dash recovery. It, you know, nets you less goals, but it definitely stops people from scoring on you as much. Well, only in the immediate few seconds. Further down the line, you're on your own. And Zen has come back from six goals down. That is... One goal away from the all-time record in 1v1 show match comeback. The record is coming back from seven goals down. Zen just came back from six. That is truly unbelievable. That's the largest comeback we've seen against a player of Moxie's caliber ever. Or equal to it. And the most recent one by default of it happening right now. And he's not done. 14 seconds to go. He takes the lead. Truly unbelievable. He never gave up. He kept chugging along. And even though he had a little blip, he still managed to get the job done. Now he's just a few seconds away. Can Moxie get it back though? He's got just a little bit of boost and that's enough. Well, Moxie's done well here. So that was a double 50-50. One on the kickoff. Another one afterwards. He didn't get the wave dash, but he didn't need it. With seven seconds to go, we're 18 goals into the game and still tied. But Moxie really needs this. This was a game that was so his his way that it would crush him to lose it. But lose it he might. Zen looking to get another air dribble started. This one off the ceiling. Well, how does he manage this? Surely Moxie can ground it. He can. And it's a diagonal spawn in OT to settle it all. Zen's ball in the back corner. Moxie's there. Zen actually left it for him, so he didn't want to leave himself open for the demo. Now Moxie's got a shot. Zen's going to save it, but that was risky. Moxie's presence created a goal-scoring chance. And now Zen's way out of the game. Well, surely Moxie's winning with this play. You've got to think he's scoring, but he misses the open net. Are you joking? And the spawn is not going to be there in time. Or is it? Moxie pre-flips. It's still Zen's play. Well, Moxie with a monumental throw. Now Zen surely for the win. Oh my goodness, I <laughs> what saves him? <laughs> well, I said this is going to be a crushing loss. If Moxie somehow loses it, it's not just because he's lost from a six goal advantage. It's also because he was the one who started the trash talk of the quick chat this game. He was the instigator. And you can't do that and then lose a six goal game. There's just no way. How has Zed come back from 7-1 to win? That is crazy. I mean, you know, the conversation yesterday after Zen was done beating Razier's and lost was, you know, is Zen top 5 EU already? Is, is Zen already top 10 in the world in ones? You know, the conversation is going to change now to is Zen just the best in, in ones? I, I really don't think there's been an, a more impressive, you know, from debut uh, 24 hour period than what we've just seen from Zen. This is. He's, he's doing something no one has ever done before. And the list of players who look like they've got a chance against him continues to rapidly decline. Mechanically, he is just perfect. Strategically, he's looked absolutely flawless. And now, if you wondered if the mental game's intact, he just came back from six goals up, or six goals down, I should say. I mean, that is what I would say what I would describe as the full package. But the job's not finished. He's lost a couple of game threes. One to Razier's, one to loss. Yesterday. Let's see if he can close it out now. Well, he faked the back corner boost grab there. Went for mid after Moxie committed. It's, you know, it's little positional plays like that that really show me that Zen has got a very high 1v1 IQ. Just kind of leaning towards the mid boost and then going back corner when Moxie decides to 
um, to commit that direction. It shows that he knows exactly what he's doing here. Yeah, I can already see the list. I mean, yeah, we're last TRK. I don't think TRK is playing 1v1 right now, so he'd probably want to practice a bit before playing Zen. <laughs> he'd probably want to get uh, in, uh, back on his 1s grind before just jumping into Zen on 0 1v1 hours past 2. So I'm pretty sure that's what TRK has got for 1v1 the past 2. Uh, he told me that he's going to play uh, grind 1s again the next time a tournament comes up. Right now, he's fully focused on 3s. Um... Yeah, Rawas is the obvious, uh, the obvious one. Jorius Rawas does the clear, I think, top two. You know, maybe throw a now point in the mix. Uh, for EU server, I reckon that's where the list stops. <laughs> that's that's where the list ends. Um, obviously, Vatira, I'm, I'm sure, would be a great series based on what Vatira was able to do against Jorius today as well. But I, I think he'd be the underdog there. I think Vatira would be the underdog against them. And yeah, you got the big three in NA, of course. Well, maybe the big four now that Yan's over there as well. Um, you got the, the the obvious Daniel AJ first killer and then Yan, who's uh, perpetually a threat to anyone in the ones world. Khaled is not as well. Yeah, Khaled's an interesting one. Um, you know, Khaled, he's kind of been the guy recently who beats everybody he's supposed to beat, but he's not been able to beat any of the very top tier players. He's got a losing record to Rawas, Moxie, um, Jack recently, even though he's, uh, you know, able to beat the the players below him very consistently, even as a winning record against Jorius recently, uh, Khaled. He'd, he'd have to be in form for sure. Yeah, that would be a great, don't get me wrong, that would be a really interesting series. Khaled against Zen. Because Khaled's got a very different style to anything Zen's face. Probably still, I you know, this is one thing I'll say about Khaled, is it still, to this day, I don't think I've seen a player with more mastery in, um, you know, creating challenges consistently regardless of the position regardless of the boost I think Khaled is the best in the world at creating successful challenges love that from Zed he's faking zero boost he doesn't want to use any boost in that exchange he's trying to bait Moxie into jumping and as soon as Moxie jumps Zen clears the ball look out Moxie <laughs> I'm sure he was wondering there where's this one headed Moxie could quickly turn here. That's exactly what he's done. Zen's right there with him, but Moxie still in a good position. Tried to go for the demo. Zen is more than ready for it. And here comes another long-range air dribble. Free flip to get the ball back under control. I mean, it seems like even when Zen ends up in an awkward position in the middle of an air dribble, even when he ends up in an awkward position on the ground, he's able to get out of it with a perfect dodge, um, a perfect pre flip a perfect recovery. Oh, well played. Moxie ties the game with a flick, and we've actually got an unironic nice one from Zen in the chat here. You've got to acknowledge perfection, but hold on a second. Oh, no, I wondered if it was going to be a flick to the right. It's, it's a flick to the left. So it's a standard Moxie flick to the left. Um, I think he is still working on his flicks to the right to try and get them up to the same level uh, as his stronger side. Zen, low to the ground still. Able to dig out a double reset. Moxie wants that long distance threat. He wants to keep Zen honest. He doesn't want Zen right up next to him for the entire two minutes that remain in this game. He wants a little bit of space for himself to build up the run ups for his legendary flick game. Oh, he's having up a net there, though, as well. I mean, Moxie's definitely rushing himself here. You can understand why, because obviously Zen's played at some pace today, but that was another open net miss for Moxie. Not the first of this series. Crossbar pinch save from Zen on the Moxie flick. And now he's got the dive challenge. Moxie doesn't have the easiest controlling touch. Great vision by Zen to reassume control of the ball. Wave dash and the mind game sets up the boost seal. Moxie's boost management intact for now. It might be enough to produce a turnover of possession. Indeed it is. A little awkward touch for Zen. Has Moxie briefly backwards to the play? Zen's still quite happy to stick around instead of backing off to mid boost. The back wall clear evens the position. Moxie's got to be careful here. There's a threat of the demo in the position. There's a threat of the immediate shot. A bit of a lull in the previous 
gold glut that we saw. As both players run down on goals. Oh, Moxie forces the own goal and he's dropping the trash talk. Nice one. Well, Moxie's relentless because <laughs> he received a straight up compliment from Zen earlier on in this game. And now Moxie responds by trash talking. He really wants that mental victory, even after failing in game two. In what many would call an embarrassing way, he's sticking to his guns. This should be a two-goal game. Oh, Moxie's missed it again, though. I mean, his long-range accuracy is all over the place. With these open nets, you can tell that he's nervous. And he'll be very nervous seeing this approach. Zen rattles the crossbar. Wants to bump on the exit. Moxie's ready for it, and he's surely now scoring an open net. That's much better. And he's up by two. He's <laughs> spamming close one. 23 seconds for Zen to work with. A very quiet minute or two for him in offense. Moxie saw a bit more success. But he's missed the boost here. Still going to shoot just to test the waters. And it's gone in. Well, this has worked because... There aren't, there's not a long left in the game. You know, if there's a lot longer left in the game there, Zen's probably just going to pop the ball into the crossbar and try to get back to it after it bounces. But there he's trying to control it and give himself a chance to come back, which is now gone. Moxie wins game three. And uh, he did so with a very impressive defensive stance. He really forced Zen to the limit in this game. Forced him to take risks, which ended up uh, going against him. You know, the issue for Moxie is that if he relies on those mistakes in Game 4, Game 5, I don't think they're likely to happen. Oh, what a slot by Zen. Well, he's managed to bring it back to a one goal, a very respectable one goal difference. And a perfectly placed near post boom. <laughs> Came in off Moxie, of course, with the blue trail post and crossbar connected. Still a long, long, long way back for Moxie. This is Still, I think, massively Zen favored based on what we've seen so far today. Uh, that game, Moxie did enough, uh, but he, I think he's going to need to step it up in, in this game or the next one if he's going to come back. Everybody is panicking about Zen's ping. It goes to a high number at the end of every game. It starts off at the, every game at a high number as well, um, but then during the game, it settles. So. He's not actually lagging. Uh, that's just something that happens at the end of every game. Yeah, he tabs out immediately uh, after the game's done and that causes his ping to, uh, to skyrocket. Moxie digging deep here. He's gonna have to. Great setup for the flick. Zen closes the distance though. That's what you gotta do against a flick like Moxie. I keep saying it. Because, you know, a lot of people call it an unstoppable shot. Well, yeah, it is if you sit in your net and watch it. Um, not if you close the gap like Zen did. Zen tilted. Now, I think he's just fighting fire with fire. I don't think he's tilted. Nothing about his play would suggest that he's tilted um, by Mox from Moxie's antics. I think he's just fighting fire with fire. You know, Moxie's had a little bit of quick chat banter for him, and Zen's saying, all right, then, I'm going to do that as well. And we can all relate to that, I'm sure. There's very few things about Mo uh, Moxie 1v1ing Zen that we can relate to. Uh, mechanically, strategically, but I'm sure we can all relate to, you know, somebody quick chatting you one time in ranked, and then as soon as they do something wrong, you spam the quick chat. You know, we've all we've all been there. We've all done that. Be honest, probably a lot of you have done that in the past week. Type one in chat if you've done that in the past week. Be honest. I did it today, smile. Yeah, I, I, I also I'm guilty, but I don't think there's a problem with that. I feel like if people, you know, people quick chat, they're asking for quick chat back. I have a lot of respect for people who quick chat before the game is over. You know, when, when people do it after the game is over, it's like, ooh, oh, look at the big talker. <laughs> this guy's tough. Quick chatting after the win is confirmed. But when people quick chat like mid game, I have, I have a lot of respect for that. I'm like, yeah, fair enough, you know? You're taking a risk there. I respect the risk taker. But when people do it after the game, I'm like, yeah, and? <laughs> it's like, that. that's meaningless. There's no risk there. Yeah, usually with auto uh, leave from Bacchus mod, no one's even there to see it anyway. 
<laughs> Johnny Russ and Khaled. Well, see, that's different. Returning quick chat after the game is over, that's different. If somebody quick chats you during the game, then you beat them and quick chat them back, I feel like that's different than somebody just like quick chatting out of nowhere at the end of the game, which uh, I, I think is just meaningless. But yeah, if somebody quick chats you during the game and then you beat them, of course, spam that quick chat. Totally different situation there. Yeah, Moxie's going for it here. Both players are trying to get inside each other's heads. I don't think it's working really for either player. I think Moxie might be getting inside his own head more than either player is getting inside the head of the other. Because um, he has missed quite a few open nets and he did lose that massive game six, uh, game two lead. Six goal lead in game two. That's what I mean to say. Okay, the Moxie got that boost. I think Zen's going to be aware of that. He's playing very carefully in the back corner. I'm just trying to keep Moxie honest there. Long shot to force Moxie back. Perfect timing from Zen, who's opted for the... He's mixing in a nice bump there. He's really using close one a lot, which I like. A nice bump, an underutilized quick chat. Moxie, or uh, Zen rather, showing how it's done. Stubby, thanks for the 23 month tier one. Welcome back to the channel, my friend. Great save by Zen. What a bounce for him as well. Going all the way to safety. Somebody says, you stand no chance against me in the prediction competition this split, mate. Get ready to become Pie Boy. I don't want to be Pie Boy. I kind of hope it's Shogun again. Not going to lie, because he was a great Pie Boy. <laughs> yeah, for anyone who's not aware, the uh, EU pre-show, um, we're doing a prediction competition for RLCS this split. We did one last split as well. And uh, Shogun lost it. Stumpy was the winner, and that uh, meant that Stumpy was allowed to pie Shogun. And then we played the video in RLCS. It was a phenomenal pieing, great contact, a very sloppy pie, I think very satisfying noise um, in particular. If you've not seen it, check out the RL Esports Twitter. You're not, you're not going to be disappointed. You're di you, it, what, some of you are you know, typing question marks. Trust me, it'll make sense if you watch the video. You'll know what I mean. You'll know what I mean. Go on the RL Esports Twitter, scroll down to last... No, to, what is it, two weekends ago? Yeah, two weekends ago. You'll find it. But yeah, we're, we're doing a prediction competition. Tune into the EU pre-show to see who's the dumbest out of all of us. That's basically what's happening. But anyway. We are just a minute away from four straight wins from Zen. Moxie. Looking to come back late in this one, and he gets started with a quick air dribble. He knew Zen was a low boost here, probably didn't expect him to be on zero, but the play that he went for made a lot of sense, just getting the ball moving quickly. Makes it pretty difficult for even a player of Zen's mechanical ability to keep up. Smash Tag, thanks for 500 bits by the way, also Yule Rat, thanks for the Prime. Super Boots, thanks for the 500 bits as well. Assassin, thanks for gifting us up to Ideology. That's a big kickoff win for Zen. Moxie, two side on, bit of a mechanical mishap. And he can't be affording to make those late in the series here, late in the game. Zen just staying active in this position. He knows that Moxie's going to try and take risks. Well, what's he doing here? Did he just give up on this one? He might have already assumed that it was in. It looked like he might have been able to make it back. Or did he just know Moxie slow rolling him? Yeah, maybe it was, it was definitely an awkward position, but... When Moxie's uh, got the, the slow roll when he's in front, the slow roll opportunity, you know he's going to take it, but I don't think even Moxie would slow roll his opponent on a deficit. Uh, that would not make any sense. So he's back within one here. The spam continues to come through. He was bumped, well, yeah, but he didn't try to get back is what I'm saying. I guess he just assumed Moxie would just rush it, which he did. 45 seconds remaining. And Moxie force... A game five, something no one else has been able to do against Zen in the previous three series he's played. This is going to be as good of a chance as any for Moxie. Opting for the mid boost instead of the back corner. That allows Zen to close the distance. Much safer play off his own back wall there. Oh, Zen's panic flip. Moxie's through. Huge mistake. And the first late game mistake we've seen from Zen of this caliber. He was in full control, but in his attempt to rush the challenge, he flips on the spot. We have another tie game with 20 seconds to go. 
And this time it's Moxie on the comeback trail. Three goals straight. Can Zen stabilize? He's got the boost advantage. We know that Moxie can still flick the ball quickly, though. Zen looking for the demo. Gets it. He's got a bounce to play with here. And an aerial play that could be all in. And Moxie challenges it well. Zen's attempt to keep the ball up has failed. Game four decided in OT. Zen first to win the race to the boost. Moxie flips. That's dangerous. He's telegraphing his position. And Zen's able to capitalize. 7 6 win. Another series win without game five being needed. And an easy in the chat from Zen. Moxie is furious at himself. He cannot believe that he's lost it in this manner. Well, you know, that's the risk. If you trash talk and win, you look like a genius. If you trash talk and lose, then uh, that's a big L. Moxie says, revenge, I put $100. Um, I'm down another day for sure. He wants revenge. Yeah, GG's Moxie. Thanks for playing. Always the entertainer. You know, some people don't like his trash talk. Some people don't like his uh, his antics. But I, I think it's great. I think it's very entertaining to watch. And uh, I'd love to see it on a LAN. Can you imagine Moxie's antics on LAN? He'd probably bring, like, cue cards with uh, quick chat written on them and just hold them up whenever his opponent mis makes a misplay. He'll just have a little... A, a, one of these signs saying, what a save. Hold it up so his opponent can see with their sound-canceling headphones on. <laughs> I think it would be great to see this.